So when it comes to retro gaming, I love it. One of the reasons is the physical media. Nowadays, we live in a very strange era, because we can basically buy a lot of games digitally. And the digital part, I don't have any problems with it, because I own a lot of digital games. Because also that has some pros and cons to it. But when it comes to retro gaming, for me, the real way to go is playing physical media. But when it comes to physical media, then we're going to get some issues. When I was starting collecting Sega Saturn, sadly, I already noticed a couple of these issues. Because when it comes to physical media, especially with the disk drives, there we're going to get issues. And it will be a problem now, but also it's going to become a big problem in the future. So the first problem we have seen with the retro market is the prices. Here, the PAL games are absolutely crazy expensive. So I basically switched to the Sega Saturn Japanese editions. And those are more affordable, but still very expensive. But I noticed these are in way better condition than most games I have played and had for the Sega Saturn. Okay, so let's talk about the first problem with physical media, especially the discs. So I'm noticing like the Japanese versions I'm owning, like all of them are, are always in mint condition. So that is not of course the problem. The problem lays in the quality of the disc they're using. So Sega did use a lot of good discs back in the day because most of them are still working. But when you're looking at the Sega Saturn Power games, I bought a couple of them and it's like a freaking nightmare. So first of all, when you're looking at the quality of the disc, it's okay. But the thing is like, look how scratch this freaking thing is. And that's going to be like the general issue. Beside the point that these cases are freaking horrible and they will fall apart fairly easy. I already mentioned like depending what kind of quality disc we're going to have because sometimes some disc will become obsolete and not working in the future. I have seen it with Xbox Classic and 360. But beside the quality of the disc itself, of course another issue that we're going to see in the future is the laser unit. The laser units, I have even made some videos about them. There are some kits that you can replace them and that's what we're going to do today. But this time we're not going to replace the optical drive for a new one or check out how we can replace the laser. No, we're going to do it differently. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video we are going to talk about the SD upgrade for your Sega Saturn. So I picked up this PCB board, including some Sega Saturns. Yeah, I just noticed somebody was selling this and yeah, finding these PCB boards is going to be a big challenge. Just going to say it up front. Because if you want to find a cheap solution like with the Sega Dreamcast, it's going to be slightly difficult as I'm making this video. And I know there are a lot of different brands out there. So the Phoebe, the 2.4 I'm having here, and the other one, like two different brands. But also there are some things you need to know. First of all, like we're having different ribbon cables inside the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, this version uses a micro SD card and this one just uses an SD card. Not a big of a deal, especially the SD cards. But there are different ways you can play. Okay, so when it comes to the ribbon cables, they were going to get an issue because you need to have the certain, let's say Sega Saturn, in combination with the PCB. And also I noticed when you look it up, there are even ways you can plug in at the back of the Sega Saturn in unit with an SD function. So again, there are many ways to play, but also try to find these things. But in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to replace my CD drive inside this PAL machine because my disk drive unit has been not working anymore for some time and we just need to replace it. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, also I tried a couple of things, but it didn't work out. And I mean, cleaning the lens, try to fix it, but sadly we need to replace it. Okay, so if you want to remove the cover of the Sega Saturn, this is like easy peasy, because this is such an easy thing to do. Just we need to remove the screws and that's it. Remove the back cover and you're just ready to go. So when you have done this, the only thing you need to do is like lift up the cover. Like removing this from the case itself, this is like one of the easiest consoles I've ever like did in teardown of. So first of all, so what you can see over here, we're going to see the laser unit, we can see ribbon cable, a power cable, and there is another thing that we need to remove over here. Because if you don't remove it, you cannot of course tear down the CD unit, remove the power cable, remove the ribbon cable, be very gentle with that. Because if you're going to break it, you have an issue and you need to get yourself a new ribbon cable. When done that, we can just remove the CE drive or the unit. That's it. That's the only thing that we need to do. So, and again, I just want to point out, you can find replacements for this. And if you're handy enough, you can even like replace the laser. So it's not like always the worst case scenario if your unit is going to be broken. But and again, there are some replacement units for that, but also we're going to get different versions. So finding the right one, it's going to be quite challenging. Okay, so everything has been removed. 
very easy I already told you so next thing that we need to do we need to apply this PCB that's the only thing that we need to do and of course what we're going to connect is the power cable and the ribbon cable but also take consideration you need to have the right unit for a certain ribbon cable otherwise you cannot assemble this but okay here can you already see like how to plug it in and yeah you can see like we're going to use the two pins at the front that's it like you don't need to have anything extra so let's plug in the power that's the first thing we need to do next up the ribbon cable this is going to be slightly challenging simply because we need to let the connector be unlocked we need to plug in the ribbon cable and then lock it again and be very gentle with this and that's it that's the only thing you need to do so next up the only thing that we need is the sd card with the firmware and i'm using a sandisk extreme i recommend using a very fast one it's like a drag and drop system in your pc drag your files to it and plug it into your machine and if you want to reach inside for the sd card that can be done very easily there are some 3d printed parts for it if you want to make it more fancy but for the video just want to leave it like this and maybe in the future we'll make the 3d printed upgrade maybe you can pick it up from etsy or ebay or aliexpress who knows we will see in the future Okay, so when your SD card has been configured, you have added all of your games. The next thing you need to do is just power it on and will boot up instantly into the SD function unit. I think it's a really cool, convenient way. The list itself is just a basic list and here you can find all of the games that you have added and converted from your original games. Okay, so what you can do with a reset in-game, you will reset the game like a normal disc and we turn it on and off. Then we're basically like going to reboot the full system and get back to the list. In my previous video I also talked about the ultimate card, so if you're going to combine it, it is possible you have action replay functionalities like cheating, but also you can load up fairly easy every single region and having the RAM upgrade. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing that the load times are not like super fast or instantly at the moment. So you still have some loading times, so maybe like having a couple of seconds faster of loading. But you can see like it still shows the prepare for battle and it takes still quite some long time so compare it within this drive you're not going to get major let's say upgrades with this it's more like a convenient thing now you can just basically play your physical games through an image and just have the convenient way to reset and load your games like this In my opinion that instant load would be like a cool feature because with like games like Mortal Kombat 2 will give like a big advantage to this because still you can see that we're going to get a couple of seconds of black green so when you're comparing with a Mega Drive or a cartridge version we're going to get instant loading that would be like such a big awesome thing and yeah this is not a big deal but especially in game I'm noticing is that it's not like the best experience of Mortal Kombat 2 that you can have. A couple of seconds that will give you faster loading time, especially when you're looking at games that almost didn't have a very long loading time. There we're going to see almost instant loading. And in my opinion, that's pretty damn awesome. So is this the best solution? That is something you need to decide for yourself. For me, the ultimate solution would be like you can still play games and use an SD card. So having more like this hybrid system, but sadly it's not the case with this. So as one of the options, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this SD function? Is it great? You're still playing on original hardware, only we're not playing with original disc based games anymore. Yeah, nevertheless, let me know in the comments, what I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked Family, and I will see you in the next video.